Hey there, my name is Adam McCowan and I'm an associate professor of English at Tulane and I am trying to make a video today to talk about my new book, Fortification and its Discontents from Shakespeare to Milton. Now I've tried to make this video about 17 times and each time it comes out so boring that I can barely even listen to it myself. So I decided I would just do it out here in my um, makeshift uh, outdoor teaching area, which is my sort of medieval camp and uh, just talk about um, why I wrote it. So the first question I was asked to address was how I got this idea. Well, I got this idea because I love the Renaissance. I love the 14th, 15th, 16th, and 17th centuries and everything about them. You can tell I've got my my fire and blood Targaryen shirt on uh, even, and I didn't even plan it that way. Uh, I love going to old cities in Europe and the Americas and just looking at them. And I became fascinated with these new fortifications that were being built in the age of fire weapons uh, at the time when um, the medieval city walls were supposedly being torn down to make way for modern cities. Uh, they started indeed building bigger, more monstrous, more expensive walls than ever before. And I thought, wow, these things were changing everything about the Renaissance. Uh, how did they affect the literature? I bet if I looked hard enough, I will find out how. And fortification and its discontents from Shakespeare to Milton is the result. The next question is, what were the challenges? The challenges, uh, as in everything else in life, the hardest thing is also the thing that makes it possible. No one else is working in this field. Uh, there aren't any literary scholars who can talk much about fortifications of the Renaissance or really military cultures beyond the basics. Um, there's me and a handful of other folks are doing it. And um, so I was writing this largely without being able to consult with other smart people, preferably smarter people. Um, you know, uh, so it's, it's exciting to be out there at the forefront of knowledge, but it's also lonely. And that was a challenge. Next question is, um, what influence do you think it will have? Well, now that is a good question. Literary scholarship uh, tends to make a splash over the long haul. The first book I wrote on soldier poets in the age of Shakespeare, Elizabethan soldier poets. So the real title is English Mercuries. If you want to see if it's available at your local bookstore. Um, the it, at first, it made absolutely no impression on anyone, um, except for a few reviewers, uh, one of whom thought it would be cool to make fun of my picture. So it was actually not very influential. In fact, it was the opposite of that in the first couple of years. Within 10 years, however, two other scholars wrote books on soldier poets in Renaissance France and Renaissance Spain. So it, and they directly uh, cited my book as its influence. So that book started a conversation about soldier poets, and there had been no conversation about soldier poets before. So I would say that that book was extremely influential, even though at first it didn't seem so. Fortifications and its dis discontents from Shakespeare to Milton is going to be more influential, I suspect, because the fact is, if you like the Renaissance and you like visiting cities um, that were built in the 16th and 17th centuries, you're going to notice these extraordinarily elaborate fortification systems that they had to tear down suburbs to build, that took all the resources of kings to build. Um, you're going to ask yourself, what are these things? Why did they build them? How did this affect people's lives? If you ask questions like that and go to the library, you will find this book, which does not answer all those questions, but it begins to frame the questions that will help you ask even smarter questions. And that's how knowledge gets built. So I suspect this book will be extremely influential over the long haul. Uh, I was, what is next for me after this one? Well, every book you write builds on the one before. So this book is built on what was left over from English Mercury's. I left a lot out of this book uh, because I, uh, I wanted to get it out there. And I also don't like reading particularly long books. So um, in this book, I decided to um, not talk about the effort to rebuild Hadrian's Wall, which is the wall between England and Scotland uh, in 1587, which is a wacky idea, but they, they thought it was a good idea. Uh, and the reason why I decided to leave it out, which I just uh, is that it seemed to me uh, more appropriate as the beginning of a larger book on uh, waning sovereignty in early modern England, uh, the claim of which is essentially that smart people like Shakespeare and Spencer recognized that 
the world they lived in was getting too big and too complicated for kings to manage. And they could not think of an alternative. And so they were a little scared. I'll let you know how it goes. Maybe it'll be out in 10 years. And the last question is, uh, if I could sum up fortification in its discontents in one sentence, what would that sentence be? Hmm. Now that's always a tricky question, but I will do my best shooting from the hip. It is about a, a time when people in Europe and the Americas, and the Amer European colonies in the Americas, were being asked to sacrifice just about everything in the interests of building safer cities, cities that could resist high-powered armies carrying high-powered fire weapons. They were asked to sacrifice everything and change everything. And smart people like Shakespeare and Spencer and Winthrop, Champlain, were asking themselves, is this really necessary? What do we lose in the process? The, the book examines the literature of the period to try to answer those questions. Now, hopefully, I've been able to talk about fortification and its discontents from Shakespeare to Milton in a way that makes you want to rush out to the bookstore and buy the remaining 20 copies available if you're lucky. No, I'm, I'm joking. You can get it at, at Amazon, no doubt. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed the book. It was fun writing it. It is fun creating knowledge. It is lonely creating knowledge. And so it is always a great time to be able to talk about your work with interested people like you. Thank you very much. Thank you.